Yo, 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 what's up? Uh, Moon here today, Math by the Moon, trying to give you some just a screencast on how to do the bell ringer with powers of I. So, first thing I want to do is get my little cheat sheet around so that I'm ready. Hang on, I wasn't ready to even record this because I didn't have my thing hooked up. Now I think I might be. Let's go this route. Alright, so my, my little device that I use to help me memorize it. So I got I, negative 1, negative I, and 1, and I do it again. I, negative 1, negative I, and 1. 0 in the 1 in the middle. 1, 2, 3, and this is 0 again when you divide by 4. Um, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 here. So now I have all my, my answers up top. And these are just my remainders down here. Okay, so that helps you, right? We're looking for the answers across the top. If you divide this by 4, you get 65, which is remainder nothing, so it's equal to 1. If you divide this by 4, you would get 0.75, negative 157.75. Which is remainder three, and it's a negative. So I need to make sure I go over here to the negative three, and this one would equal i. Down here with the monomial multiplication, there's no extra powers that we have to take care of at all, so we can multiply the coefficients. Uh, eight times negative six would be negative 48. And one thing that might be helpful is if you put little powers above the number, especially when it's not there, so you don't forget that the power is always a 1. This would make it i cubed. And we actually have a definition of i cubed, which is negative i. So it would be negative 48 times negative i which is going to be a positive 48i. Okay? Then we come over here and we have two powers we have to deal with. And the first one, and I think, I think the reason why kids continuously get this wrong is because they, they'll, they'll memorize a rule, or they have already memorized a rule, and then they forget the rule, and they try to guess. Well, there's no need to guess here. 4i squared is really 4i times or i. Okay? There's no need to guess. I'm going to drop down i to the negative 12. And for this one, what we need to do, and we'll, we'll come back to this one in a second, but we need to define the negative exponent rule. Because I don't know how to write out 2i times 2i times 2i a negative 3 amount of times. It's not something that's feasible. So we have to understand how we can do it without affecting um, our... We have to remember our negative exponent rule. Bottom line. So I'll come back to that in a second. So this would be 16, 4 times 4, i squared. So this would be i squared if I do add those together. And negative 12 would make i to the negative 10. Okay. Now, if we kind of focus in on this piece right here, that's 4 squared and i squared. Right? 4 squared. Not 4 times 2. It's 2 of everything in here. It's 2 4s multiplied together. And two i's, i, multiplied together. So over here what we're going to do is we're going to take 2 to the negative third power. And we're also going to take i to the negative third power. Okay. Now we have to remember our negative exponent rule so we can simplify this. And a lot of you guys are going to type this in your calculator and you're going to get uh, a decimal 0.125. And that's fine. 0.125 is really 1 over 8. Okay. So now what I know is... I have 2 to the negative third, which is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive third. That's your negative exponent rule. It has to move down to the bottom. Now, I'm not going to move this negative exponent because I can combine it with the other i's and make i to the negative 13. Okay? So this will be 16 times 1 over 8. Right? This is really an 8. 16 times 1 over 8 is 2. And i, I would add the 2 exponents here and get negative 13. And so we're in the game of dividing by 4 at this point, and we're going to get uh, 13 divided by 4 will be uh, 3.25, and it's negative, right? It's a negative, so its remainder is 
a 1 on the negative side. So I'm going over here to a remainder of 1 on the negative side, so it's going to be a negative i. So my final answer would be 2 times negative i, which is the same as negative 2i. That's where I would want that one today. Okay? Negative 2i. So the negative exponent rule, just, uh, just a quick little blurb here. If I had 5 to the negative 2, that's the same as 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. Okay? Uh, if you're working on like a question in the review, which has some powers of i, it might be helpful. Like something like i to the 43rd divided by i to the 12th, let's say. The exponent rule here, you subtract. So this would be i to the 43 minus 12 would be 31, right? And then we can divide by 4 and do our little tricks that we normally do. So with division, if you see any division, you subtract, all right? Um, just another tidbit here. If I had something like 3i to the 4th to the 3rd, let's just say. If you're stuck and the exponent rule doesn't make any sense to you, um, a lot of kids last year would draw these arrows, and this is where they got messed up. They would do 3 times 3, and they would write 9 here. It is not 9, okay? Visualize what this means. It means 3 times itself 3 times. 3 times itself 3 times. I to the 4th times itself 3 times, okay? So it's literally, if I wanted to write it out, I could. I could do 3i to the 4th, 3i to the 4th, and 3i to the 4th. Okay? And then I'd have 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And I'd add up these 4s, and I'd get 12. So what I guess I want to tell you is raise the coefficient to this power. Raise the coefficient to this power, but multiply any exponents. So that's why i to the 12th. And I've seen some kids think that, okay, so I raise this one. I should raise that one. And then they do 4 to the 3rd power. Well, think about this. There's... If you wrote it out, you would not have i to the fourth more than three times, you know, like literally. So four things three times is 12, you know. So I, I, I can't, I don't want to confuse you. Yes, you raise the coefficient to the power, but you do not raise this exponent to the three. You multiply it, okay? Worst case scenario, write it out like this so you don't mess it up. So hopefully that helps the little pieces within these monomial multiplication problems that are hanging you up. All right. Let me know if you need any help. Stop by on the Zooms. Later.